McCrary? Here. Dockler? Here. Holf? Here. Vami? Here. Weber? Here. Whitney? Here. And Wolf? Here. We Thank have, you. We have full attendance. We have full attendance. Great. Uh, first item of, of business is to approve the minutes from the May 24th meeting. As Move approval. We have presented. a motion from Mr. Holf. Second. Second from Mr. Wolf. Any further comments or questions? Hearing that all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next. Um, Accelerate Loan Request First I LLC, Ms. Richards. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Um, as you will recall, we had our second meeting of the Accelerate Loan Review Committee, which is, of course, the Growth Fund Committee meeting in that capacity on um, June 21st. And at that point, um, as, as your staff report kind of summarizes, um, there appeared to be consensus that um, ready to move forward with the application from First Eye, subject to the additional due diligence, such as you know credit reporting things that we were in the process of, of getting underway. Um, there was a, a sense that we should perhaps do a little bit of due diligence on the concept itself from our first responder community. And then the idea that um, instead of just a straight loan, perhaps a convertible note would be appropriate. So we've attempted to address those three items either in your staff report or, or we will today. So in terms of the due diligence, um, it's, it's come right down to the wire, but we did get all our Equifax reporting done just this afternoon. Um, no red flags on either the principals or the business. Um, the public record search also didn't turn up anything untoward, so we feel like that box can be certainly checked as, as we've, we've looked at these things and, and nothing has turned up. Um, in terms of the product concept, we've got Where'd Gary go? Right here <laughs> to talk about that from a first responder point of view. And I was hoping that we would have Dan here to talk about the, you know, the concept of a convertible note. Um, Dan has said that while he doesn't really have the documents ready, he certainly feels that he can get something that he'll be comfortable with. So any approval would be subject to that. But the, the real topic of discussion is that discount rate. The sample that Mr. Gaster provided showed a, a, a discount rate of 20 or 80 percent, depending on how you look at it. And Mr. Gaster is available to talk about that via Zoom yes. and, and Brandon as well. So assuming there are no questions on the due diligence end that my staff have worked on, um, I'd like to have Mr. Lorenz come and talk about kind of the due diligence on the concept. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Richards. And the uh, Zoom tiles have just come up on my screen. So, uh, Mr. Gaster, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us again today. Good to see you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, Chief Lorenz, please. Thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, just a little background with UAS and, and emergency response. I, I, I think we know beyond doubt of the benefit of UAS and first response for a multitude of ways. Both during and after the incidents are used, you know, during the incidents to provide that type of information. When I speak, you know, not just for the fire service, but well, I'm not an expert in law enforcement, I think we see that that's a very benefit to them as well. Um, and we know that there's both tethered and untethered types of drone to provide that benefit. Uh, one of the challenges with the fire side of it is many of our, our incidents, particularly here in Grand Forks, are over quickly. Our job is to get the fires out when they're small, right, to protect the property. And so it's when those incidents get large that the value really begins to show itself. And so we, we know that that value is there, and so the, the, the ability to deploy it quickly has been a challenge. Uh, I've been involved with some of Mr. Weber's projects with UND trying to figure out how to expedite that, that process, and I had a conversation this morning with Mr. Gaster about his product, and where it's kind of a partnership with the, the, the commercial, industrial side, and how that incorporates the first response where their products would be at the facilities throughout a community at an affordable price. There's untethered types of systems that are much more expensive. Um, so I believe that it, it, it provides a value and it could provide a service for first responders. I don't know until we could test that type of product, we know exactly what that is, but I can tell you that 
the Grand Forks Fire Department would be loved to be on the front end of that. Um, I can also say that I think we need to determine what else can this type of product be used for. What other services in the city could benefit from this type of a product? We don't know all the things that it can do, whether it's for monitoring traffic, street closures, um, weather coming in, um, incidents going on in that facility, of course, are a big one. Um, but I think that until we can get something in place to start to test it, we don't know exactly what those benefits can be. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any further questions for, for Chief Lorenz? I'm sorry. No, I think, I think we're good. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Um, in fact, uh, from that, Mr. Gaster, uh, the, the, uh, the notion that this is primarily intended for um, incident response, um, are there other uh, intended uh, uses for uh, a tethered drone? Say at uh, the University of North Dakota is a, an example that we've uh, frequently used. Would there be a possibility of using this for other purposes? Or what is, do, you, do, you, do you have some thoughts for us on that? Um, yeah, I think there are, I mean, clearly, as you say, primarily it's um, uh, designed for incident response. But certainly, uh, one of the use cases we've been looking at and we've been talking to Hitachi uh, lately is about uh, movement analytics. So looking at traffic sorry, Mr. Gaster, um, uh, could, could you bring the volume back up where it was back there? We could hear very well a moment ago. If, if that... Are you still hearing me? Yeah, we can. Sorry, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so one of the use cases we have been looking at, uh, obviously the, the, uh, the main use case is incident response, and obviously that takes the form of many different types of incidents, from uh, fire, uh, from unfortunately active shooting type incidents, uh, but also from uh, crowd and people monitoring in terms of, of people flow. And um, one of the things we've been talking to Hitachi about just recently uh, is using this kind of system uh, to feed a movement analytics uh, type system that will allow for traffic management, uh, potentially allow for an understanding of how people move through a community so that you can make that experience uh, a bit better where the choke points are. Um, but really, uh, as, uh, as Chief Lorenz says, uh, we'd like to get the main basic application really worked through uh, because I think a lot of applications will fall out uh, of that uh, in terms of can we use it for this, can we use it for that. Uh, and that may or may not require slight modifications to the design, uh, but I think we'll learn that as we go. But there are certainly more applications than we have uh, designed for yet. Very good. Uh, very good. Thanks for uh, entertaining that question. Of course, it's not our job here to tell you what what you should be doing with this, but uh, I, I appreciate your, your willingness to consider that. Uh, any further questions for Mr. Gaster at this time? Um, hearing none, uh, Mr. Gaster, if, if you would uh, speak to the issue of uh, a convertible debt. Um, first, I want to apologize to the Growth Fund Committee for my tardiness. I was enthralled in reviewing an agreement uh, and lost sight of the time, so I, my apologies. Um, I've, I've got the, the uh, prototype or the document that I think Mr. Gaster shared with uh, uh, the ED, EDC. Um, I have not had a chance. I've only briefly looked at it. Um, I have not had a chance to take a look at it in any great detail. But I think the what I was what I'm looking for is some guidance from the growth fund and the JDA. One to make sure that you're comfortable with a convertible uh, note, and and I think there was a discussion about or in the document that I reviewed an 80% factor that would be utilized that you'd convert um, uh, the promissory note be equivalent to you know an 80% price whatever that would equate to as far as the number of shares. I don't know if that's an acceptable level or not. I, I, that's not something that I can necessarily recommend one way or the other. That's something that I think the growth fund, if I can get some guidance on that, one, if this is something that's acceptable to you. Um, and again, I think what I explained in the, in the subcommittee of this committee was that um, 
as long as it's an option on behalf of the city or the JDA to be able to convert it at a point in time where you control when you want to convert it, uh, I think that's going to be the most important element, and those are things that I can certainly draft. So I, I just have not, my schedule has been such that I just have not had an opportunity to you know, do a deep dive into that document other than to just uh, briefly review it. And, and those, that was the first uh, issue, that 80% that factor. I don't know if that's something that's acceptable, but I think the primary is, is whether the growth fund is, is willing to you know, get into that type of conversion to begin with or if you still just want to be a, a creditor throughout uh, just want some guidance on that before I spend too much time uh, reviewing and drafting a document. Drafting it is, I do that all the time, so that's not a big deal. Very I love good. doing it. <laughs> uh, thanks for being with us today. Um, no need to apologize earlier. Um, uh, my memory of our, our last meeting was that there absolutely was interest if, if this were an option. Um, and as far as the, uh, the, the uh, convertibility rate, um, I don't know that we can set that as a committee because each uh, application is probably going to come to us with its own set of circumstances. Um, so uh, it, it, with that said, I'll open it up uh, for other committee members to ask any questions for, for Mr. Gaustad. Mr. Wolf, please. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gaustad, the first um, would be as conceptually uh, the JDA to hold a convertible note as an asset. Um, have you looked into that, or is that acceptable for the JDA to hold that as an asset? That, from a legal standpoint, I have not. I know there are some, I've seen some uh, legal opinions from the AG's office about um, uh, Job Development Authority being able to uh, retain equity positions off the top. I, I've read them off the top of my head. I can't recall the ultimate conclusion on that, but I know there are opinions out there, uh, AG's opinions, on that very point. Thank you, Mr. Gosted. So th that's the first thing I think is, as a group, getting, just getting comfortable that the JDA could hold that as an asset. Um, that was where I wanted to start, you know, as far as it, it's a, um, a good point. Mr. Gaster had 80%, um, I think, is what was discussed. I, I personally don't have insight into if that would be the right percentage at this point, but more of the legality was my question on it at this point. Yes, Mr. Curry. Uh, I think just to kind of recap a little bit too, and, and actually before I get started, Mr. Gaster, um, really appreciate your time. Uh, this is our first uh, first go around with the Accelerate Grand Forks um, uh, loan program, so we're kind of kind of muddying it up a little bit, and I think everybody wants to be cautious on setting precedent. And um, so, so, so one, I really, really appreciate your time and all the Zoom calls and 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 all of your time, and we look forward to seeing the bill, <laughs> bill come in. Um, <laughs> With, with that being said, I think that a, as a committee, we had talked quite a bit, you know, there's a couple options. And, and so maybe this is for uh, Ms. Richards and staff, but, you know, either a, a component where the, the applicant, either dollar for dollar, you know, puts more cash in or some sort of a ratio there where they're bringing in cash, um, or, or um, having some personal guarantees, or, and we never really considered convertible. Uh, convertible debt. So I think that maybe just as a, the framework of the accelerator program, I think that maybe would be a good option as well. I think the nature of these applications, it probably doesn't bode well for one personal guarantees um, or two for um, for them to actually have another cash injection or some sort of a match. So I think that could be a good route that may be utilized, um, which that can be a conversation another time, not don't want to waste Mr. Gaster's time. Um, so, so with that being said, one of my one of the, you know, I think it's something that I definitely want to support. I, I'm totally on board with this. I think we should make a, you know a, a approve it with the with the the contingency of obviously Mr. Gostad being able to get the details. I think conceptually everybody's 100% on board. I think we love the idea. We love the enthusiasm with Grand Forks. I appreciate Chief Lorenz here uh, being able to kind of the test subject test site would be here for you guys. Um, I like in previous conversations, Mr. Gaster, you had mentioned that there could be a component of, of doing local uh, investment for uh, for a Series A or for maybe first round of funding like that as well. Uh, the only thing I don't know is is kind of some of the details. And so, what what does that look like? What does that what does that conversion look like? Is it at a at an equity event? So, does it have to take place at a you know at a, at a Series A or uh, at what point? And then the philosophical question that I would have for the JDA is, yeah, is that the route that they want to go is to 
you know, the, the city to own a private, have equity in a private company. Um, that's not my decision to make. It's just a, a food, food for thought. And, and in that, I would encourage um, Mr. Gostad, if, if this is the route we go, to, to maybe have some sort of <clears throat> language, if we can, on an option to liquidate that position. So even if we convert to equity, if, if there is some way to then have some exit strategy as well, so whether that be, you know, op option first to other investors or local or however that looks, um, <clears throat> just so from a long-term perspective, you know, the city's not holding this position for 20 years or whatever it might be, but, you know, if we, we want to convert at an equity round, great, we convert, we get that 20% kicker, fantastic, but let's recoup those funds and use them for, for other economic development and other startups. So that's just some kind of food for thought, and I apologize for kind of rambling a little bit. Those are just kind of all of my thoughts, but I think it's uh, um, really like the idea, really like that you guys are looking at Grand Forks to get started, and, um, but yeah, those are just kind of the, the little details that I'd really rely on Mr. Gostad. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Mr. Costa. Please. It's an excellent point. The exit strategy is uh, you can get into companies, but knowing what your exit strategy is going to be is, is probably as important, more important uh, than getting into them sometimes. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Wolf, please. Continue on that. Um, thank you. And again, Mr. Gaster, I echo Mr. Crary's comments. Uh, I personally uh, am impressed, and I like this uh, idea and concept. Thanks for looking at our region. To me, it's uh, as a committee, growth fund committee, Mr. Gossett will look into the legality of convertible debt. Um, I'll remind our committee that back on May 3rd, we did look, we uh, at our uh, tried to develop a program, and and. Um, what I see in front of us here today is for us to add or modify that program potentially, and that would be this convertible debt if it is legal to do so, um, in the, um, to consider this. So we, uh, Mr. Gaster has shared with us, they have injected equity in the business and it's uh, along with some lift funding. So there's of their total capital plan, this is the equity they've injected is 15, plus percent. So for us as a committee, what I think we, we um, need to uh, consider is in the case of uh, if there is 15% equity in a project, um, would we consider this convertible debt aspect? And if so, what is the appropriate discount percentage? And so to me, that's what I think we're, we're contemplating is, um, is modifying what we agreed to on May 3rd with this other part of the program, convertible debt. And, and I'm interested uh, if the rest of the committee is, um, I think we um, interested in other perspectives, but if we are to do this, I think we should talk about how much of it we would want to do. What is our, I know our cap with Accelerate was a certain dollar amount, but if we would do convertible debt, I think as a group we should also agree on how much we'd want to do with this. So, because it is a little different than straight notes. Those would be my comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. M Mr. Kafami. So just to jump on kind of that same bandwagon, I'm supportive, I think this is great. I love that we're going down this path. Um, I just want to see what our plan is and where, you know, where our limits are, how much convertible debt can we tolerate. You know, I think you had said that the 20% or 80%, that was your number, Mr. Gosted? Or was that, that? That was within the template that was shared. Just, just was shared, okay. So yeah, I think obviously exploring that. Uh, I am fearful of conflicts of interest that are created with long-term ownership. So should we, I, I, again, I love the idea, but is, is the exit strategy that we have to be out at five years or three years or whatever? Because if someone comes up and then now the, you know, they're submitting a proposal for the police department, now we own part of the company that's submitting a proposal and there's just, there just seems to be there's going to be some issues that arise that maybe aren't here yet, but I think will be. Um, so I know that we've got that here, but I, we've got some terms here, but I think that there, there has to be a finite end um, to protect us from situations where uh, Mr. Gaster can't do business with the city because of the conflict. Uh, so that's just part of my thoughts there. And, and then really exploring the 20%, I, I guess I'd like to get outside opinion on that. Um, as much as I think this is well prepared and I think we have, we have all our ducks in a row, I don't know that I'm prepared to make a recommendation without some more of this information. Um, just in, in my opinions, I'd like to see a little bit more 
um, so that we could have some concrete information to just go on rather than just making a motion with guidance from our staff. Thank you, Mr. Kwame. Uh, Mr. Holt, please. Thanks. And I, um, so I have maybe more of a process question um, or discussion, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I, what I'm wondering now is how quickly we can act on some of this stuff. And I say that because I want to be respectful of Mr. Gasser. Uh, and, but, but ultimately, you know, um, as, if we reflect on what's been discussed today, it's probably 10% about the company and 90% about the program and the process, right? And ultimately, normally we would be figuring out the program and the process before we start taking applications for such a thing. I worry about the precedence of us <clears throat> negotiating unique terms for each application that comes through here. Um, I understand we want to, you know, that the, um, the program was meant to be aggressive and to, uh, to help our economic development strategies. But, <clears throat> you know, again, to, to Mr. Kavami's point, if, you know, if it's 80% this time and the next company comes and says, well, you know, uh, we do 90%, then we get into a mess of um, Mr. Gaster coming back and saying, well, wait a second here. So I, I worry a little bit about our processes here and just getting it set up, but at the same token, I want to be. I want to act quickly and get this figured out so that um, Mr. Gaster doesn't feel like, and and you know, and future applicants that are probably waiting too, um, that they're not. We're not delaying everything six months. So that was maybe a long way of me saying we've got a lot of questions here, and I might be recommending more work for this committee here in the near future and more meetings. But I think it's necessary in this case. Um, it also might be worth asking Mr. Gaster about timelines too, and and you know and you know how quickly we uh, need to act for uh, in order for this to fit into his business plan. Because frankly, he's probably been planning for this to be a part of his business plan for a while now. We had some discussions about that at the last meeting. Um, so uh, I I agree that I think we need to do a little more due diligence on the 80% number because I don't have insight into that either. I, I mean, I, I think um, that I don't know if we can give Mr. Gosset enough guidance on that if we don't have it. And I don't want to just pluck it out of thin air. Um, so I, I, I would ask that, um, Mr. Chair, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but it seems that we've got some more figuring out to do in this program. And it seems backwards to uh, approve an application and then adjust afterwards. But maybe I'm on an island on that. I don't know. Uh, well, before I respond, uh, you asked a question for Mr. Gaster. Uh, uh, Mr. Gaster, would you be willing to discuss uh, uh, timelines? Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, obviously, um, the process has been, uh, we've been in discussions uh, concerning the program since about. I don't know, October, November last year. Um, and we've been very happy to be kind of the guinea pig, uh, helping figure it out, helping work it out. We do have the number plugged in for August. Uh, so I would really ask the committee to um, lean on us for any questions, lean on us for any um, support responses uh, that you may need. Uh, but I also respectfully ask that if we can get to a conclusion uh, that allows funding for August, it means we don't have to do a whole bunch of adjustments uh, and, and it, it kind of dragging on and throwing some uncertainty uh, into the funding requirements as we move into third and fourth quarter. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gaster. I'll so, come back just a moment. Ms. Richards, um, the uh, next JDA meeting is scheduled for? For July 6th. July 6th. Very good. Uh, Mr. Holt. Well, thank you, Mr. Gaster. That's helpful. I, I guess, you know, the other point that I want to make is um, uh, us coming to these conclusions and figuring this out and asking these questions. I don't think it's the fault of anybody. That I think this is just how it works. We, you know, I mean, we talked about the program. Um, Mr. Lund presented on the program. We talked about it at the EDC board level. Um, but anytime there's a first like this, you're always going to find things out. So I. Um, 
you know, hearing that the next JDA meeting is July 6th, um, which is, you know, Tuesday, uh, I don't know when the next one is after that, or if, if uh, we have the ability to, to schedule one two weeks after that, but it, it, I think we could be respectful of Mr. Gaster's timeline, and by August, sometime in July after the holiday, even if it meant scheduling a two-hour work session with this committee, where we're doing nothing but talking about the program um, and figuring out some of this stuff and then still be able to react to Mr. Gaster's timeline and get things approved. It seemed like that might be workable if, again, I don't like to volunteer my fellow committee members for more work, but uh, if, we, if we don't do this, we're probably gonna be doing this for every application, so it would make sense for me to, to have a work session dedicated to this topic shortly after the holiday. Very good, thank you, Mr. Holt. Um, as I've heard said, uh, summer is one of the fastest weeks in North Dakota, and uh, we've been having a difficult time getting a quorum for some other matters in, in July. So I am a little concerned there. Um, use the term aggressive. We want to be business friendly and timely uh, with this. Um, most importantly, ultimately, we're not making the final decision here. Um, our job is to make a recommendation to the JDA they will uh, have to make that, that final decision. And our recommendation to support or not to support uh, can include uh, various contingencies, um, including a, a review from a city attorney and, and recommendations from city attorney. Uh, so that just as a, as a process matter, uh, I, I wanted to point that out. Uh, so I guess my follow-up question then is, Jay, there's, we have a couple or three JDA members on, on this committee. Uh, if, if we don't hash some of this stuff out, then are, are you suggesting, should we punt to the JDA to hash some of this stuff out? Or I mean, I understand that the JDA has the final recommendation, but I guess I view the role of this committee as to get through some of this stuff so that uh, it's been worked out by the time it gets to the JDA level. But, um, but if you want us to punt to you, <laughs> then that's... Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Holth. Mr. Kavami. Yeah, I, I would agree with Mr. Holth. Um, I, I think I, that was the hopes of this, of my thoughts when I asked to join this committee, um, is that those decisions would strategically be made by folks from the community as well as the JDA mem members or council members. Um, so I, you know, with Mr. Gaster, I've got no questions other than let's figure out the number, but that's not really in your wheelhouse. I think we just have a few little things that we have to figure out once and then we can move down this path much quicker next time. It's unfortunate that Mr. Gaster, you are the first through the, the docket, but I think we just have some things we still need to figure out and, and I would volunteer myself for anything that Mr. Hull signs me up for. <laughs> careful, uh, careful with that. Mr. Bum, please. Uh, thank you members of the committee. Just wanted to offer just some of the insight, you know, uh, Mr. Gaster mentioned been working on this since August, October, but even to go back a little bit further, some of the inspiration drawn for the program was as early as air autonomy or tailoree prior to a program. And it was at that time that we thought, hey, this is a pretty good idea and we should do more of that, but we need to have that conversation and create a program before we should seek those applications. So I had worked and developed uh, the application with Mr. Gaster as early as the time frame he mentioned, but we were waiting, of course, uh, for the program to come together. And, and through just some considerations on the program of what it should include and shouldn't include, um, we were using things like safe notes or terms like safe notes and, and even convertible debt. And we really hadn't come upon uh, any of those tools as being something we wanted to use at the time um, in those early applications, but even in establishing the program. And so when we did make the action in May on the program, uh, we were just double checking with ourselves, but there's nothing in there related to convertible notes or whatnot. So I would just offer um, for your consideration that you know, this application would be you know, without the, the newly injected convertible note conversation would be in line with the program as it is today. Yes. But as, as you know, and I think that the, the EDC had, uh, speaking on behalf of the EDC, have said that maybe we should consider those things. And so that's, this has been a very good and healthy conversation, something that I think the EDC would encourage. Just one thing when you're considering this application, the program currently doesn't have any parameters for that. That should be considered. But you know, perhaps you'd still have some flexibility to move the application forward if you so choose. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Baumbach. It's uh, 
important for us to consider. Mr. Um, Chairman. Please, Ms. Richards. Ms. Whitney would like to have an opportunity oh. to speak. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. I, I missed your hand there. Hi. That's okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think, you know, in listening to everyone comments on the committee, I, I concur with all of them. Um, I think the biggest things to consider, maybe even to Mr. Bombach's point, is you know, what are the frameworks and the parameters? I'm completely, you know, I'm excited by First Sight and, and the concepts and the, and the business and, and the startup. Um, but I think, yes, thinking or, um, you know, how do we set these parameters? You know, when we're thinking about convertible notes, you know, is it 18 months, 24 months? I'm really thinking through the percentages because I do agree that I think we have to have some kind of a set um, amount of a percentage so that we're not, I, I think to Mr. Holt's point, you, know, you don't get someone else coming in and saying, well, this person did this and this person did that. So I think a little extra work here in the next few weeks would be um, uh, worth it for the long term. But um, if we could still respect Mr. Gaster's time, I do also believe um, that would be important so that he doesn't um, have to spin his wheels either and lose some valuable time to bring this concept forward. Well, with that, I'm, I'm going to express an opinion that I, apparently is not going to be terribly popular, but um, uh, we had a program still being formed, but uh, relatively well articulated. Um, I think that for the life of this program, however long it goes, we could always come back and, and consider uh, revisions of the program. But at this point, this application was made under a certain set of conditions. Um, the application fits those conditions. And for me, the notion of holding up this deal for a potential option um, that ultimately the JDA could accept or reject anyway um, would be an unnecessary uh, delay. Uh, I would prefer to see us move forward with the recommendation contingent upon what uh, Mr. Gaustad finds, because what Mr. Gaustad might find is that this would not be legal for us anyway. And this would have all been a, a long, unnecessary academic discussion. Um, but this one of m hopefully many deals uh, could move forward under the current conditions and a convertible debt could be something that we work out over coming weeks, months, and, and, and that could be applied to future applications. But I'm just one member of the committee. Mr. Wolf, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. So. I, I guess from my perspective, the, the, um, the legality is a question that we have not wrestled with. I struggle with making a recommendation to a JDA without knowing if it's legal. That's, that's me. Maybe that's just me personally. The other thing with the program that, we, you know, that we're trying to design, and we talked about May 3rd, it did talk about matching dollars privately for the loan. I, maybe I'm missing something, but are we talking about matching dollars put in at this point? Mr. Baumbach? Sure. Like at the time of the loan? Yes, yeah. Um, thanks, Mr. Wolf. Um, it is my understanding that the way the program was written is that the matching dollars would even be inclusive of the lift fund loan, not just the equity contribution from the company. Mm -hmm. So that again, that's, that I think might be different than some other committee members, at least myself, um, and that's where I think that's a detail that we have to work through, in my opinion. Oh, I thought that that had been um, discussed and already accepted from the, the beginning, that, that that condition had been met. No, not, not for all committee members. Yeah, Mr. Kavani. I'll, I'll just mention quickly, you have in the, um, uh, how the program description reads, and sort of, I think, in the, the summary that was provided at the time, we had uh, private slash institutional uh, investment or equity match. Um, the institutional component to that was to capture the lift as one of many options to fulfill that, that match. With the idea, idea being that the JDA was not the only investor involved in this startup. So in this case, the match has been met through lift. But it yes. does sound like there was an expectation perhaps by this group that there be an additional cash match from the applicant, which again is our program parameters need the work. Certainly, this is no reflection on Mr. Gaster. Mr. Chair, just a follow-up question Please. on that. I think it's a fair question that we need to agree with. Um, right. Equity is left equity, or is it financing? There's a difference. 
So, right. and I think that's what our committee has to agree on. And I, it appears that we're, we have questions. Correct. Yes, Mr. Kavami, please. Um, so I would, I'd like to say that while supportive of the plan, and I think this is a successful, um, you know, venture with, without the convertible debt, I'm probably voting against this simply because there's not an equity injection to match our investment. So there has been equity brought for Lyft, but then there was no additional equity brought for us. So from a, a banker's perspective, from an investment perspective, I would demand equity to be matching our investment. So if we treat Lyft as equity, that's one thing, but I would not personally. Um, so I, I brought that up before and the convertible debt satisfies my um, need to offset some of our risk. So that's, that's where, for me, without the convertible debt option, I'm voting no. I'm, um, I'm a little perplexed. Uh, what I was hearing just a few minutes ago was kind of this rousing consensus of support for the deal. Um, and then we had some question about convertible debt, uh, which may or may, may not be legal. And then we're going back to what feels to me to be the very first step uh, in on a, a, a contingent or a, a requirement that I thought was already met. But Mr. Mr. Russell, please. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, all very, very, very valid, valid points. Very points. Very good uh, points of conversation or topics that I think as a program we definitely need to iron out. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, I don't want to lose sight of the, the whole forest on a couple of trees, and 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 I know it's it's our um, you know it's our job to try to get through as many details as we can before making that recommendation to to the JDA. Um, you know, with that with that being said, it, and I'm, I I come at this with a a little different perspective than I might personally. Uh, you know, personally, I probably might have a higher risk tolerance than uh, when I'm you know helping manage taxpayer dollars. Um, so I think it's even better to, to scrutinize it. Um, with that being said, I also think that, you know, if we, if we take a step back and go high level, do we, do we, believe, do we believe in this company? You know, are, are we willing to take a shot at the company? I mean, I think that's question number one. I think we have the consensus, yes. Um, and, and I think that's the most important question. Now, the, the hard part is getting these details. And, and so out of respect for Mr. Gaster's, Gaster's time, um, and, and really for our whole committee's time and trying to figure out what that program looks like. I for sure think we have more work to do. With that being said, um, I think if, if uh, I think that 20% kicker in, in, my, in my opinion is, is, remember it's an option as well. So if everything, if, if that 20% remember is that we don't have to exercise that option. So if we want to proceed, and I totally understand uh, Mr. Gavami's perspective, you know, if they don't have that equity in, but that's, the value added is that option. So if we see, and, and the hard part is going to be the timing. So it's going to probably going to have to be at an equity event because you need, the hard part's going to be uh, when and how much. Well, you need somebody or something to determine the how much, and that's going to be an equity event when they're raising cash. Um, and so trying to put it all into a box for any program going forward, I think is going to be very difficult because it, in Mr. Gaster's perspective, it's their job is to try to raise as much value as possible before doing a Series A, obviously. And so every company is going to be different based on their growth pattern. And so if we try to do a program that says, you know, it has to be three years or five years or whatever that might be, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think we're just going to keep spinning our wheels. So at some point, I think we may need to just, this kind of goes against the, the CPA in me, but um, we may need to kind of take a leap of faith. Um, I personally am comfortable right now with the 20% with the, the kicker as an option. And again, the details still have to get ironed out, and I, I caution the JDA to look at those details after Mr. Gosteb can, um, can go through the iron out the legality of it. Um, but with the 20%, again, that's the option. If not, we get our money whole, great, after five, or, you know, whatever, or, or if we can convert it. And the JDA, from a philosophical standpoint of owning, and when that happens is, an, is another question. But um, I, I think in this context, I, I would, I would be inclined to, to move forward with it so long as it checks out legally. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah, if I could, uh, very quickly. Um, uh, so, Mr. Curry said, are, are we willing to take a risk on this application? Uh, I heard a consensus for yes. Uh, and, and I may be wrong, but it's hard for me to imagine uh, a better or stronger application than what First Eye has, has brought to us. Anything stronger is simply uh, not going to be applying to this, this kind of program. So this is uh, intended to be um, uh, a higher risk kind of 
uh, approach or uh, almost a venture capital kind of approach. But Mr. Holt, please go ahead. Ms. Richards, was the intent to have this on the July 6th JDA agenda? Is that? Only if this group is ready to make such a recommendation. Okay. As you said, um, we could potentially schedule a special JDA meeting that's not the first week of the month um, to, to meet Mr. <coughs> Gaster's schedule of funding in August. If we need till the August JDA meeting to make a recommendation, that would get his funding to him in August. So the, the, the next potential, because the JDA meeting is July 6th, it's a Tuesday because of the holiday. So potentially that you could do one 13 days after that on a Monday, so the 19th if need be, right? And I guess where I'm going is I, I, I agree with Mr. Crary and, uh, and with Mr. Kavami in the sense that I, I left the last meeting that we had when we discussed this thinking that the convertible debt was sort of the option that got everybody on board and we were going to do our due diligence on that and that satisfied that. So I would, I would be okay moving this forward understanding that we have a little more due diligence to do on the convertible debt piece. And when I say due diligence, I mean two things. Is it legal and is this industry standard or sort of the norm in terms of from a numbers perspective? And if it is, we can move it forward uh, to respect timelines um, and then also schedule a working session with this group uh, concurrently to hash out some more of this and think about as the next applications come through, what does this look like? So we don't have 14 meetings for each application. So, so let I, me ask this, it might be a rhetorical question, but let's say that Mr. Gausted finds out that it, it, it isn't legal for us to uh, in, engage this uh, convertible debt option. Does that mean that we're going to re reject uh, a deal that we have otherwise been singing the praises of? Is that what, what we're prepared to do? I, I've always personally had concern about the equity. Uh, I, that's since first meeting, I've had that concern. So it's just when you go and get a loan, you have to have something in. And he's already, or, or I should say, Mr. Gaster and, and, and the company has already had an, an, an equity injection for the lift fund. There hasn't been additional ad equity for us. But so if, if this were a bankable loan, there, there, there's no, they, they wouldn't be applying to this program. This program is meant to be for deals. Uh, beyond or, exactly you know, like a venture capital type program in which case we would get equity we would get ownership that's where that for me that was the the connection where it said okay everyone's got some skin in the game we've all got some risk and I'm willing to accept that so and I, I don't know I can't say yes or no to that in terms of the legality of it if that means that it's moved forward I, I guess again I left the last meeting thinking that that was something that the committee all agreed with and and when I say that, I also, it seemed that Mr. Gaster agreed with that approach and was okay with it too. So um, I would like to, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Gosted, but I don't, it shouldn't, we should be able to figure out the legality of that relatively quickly, <laughs> I, I think. I would think we'd be able to figure it out fairly soon. Okay, okay. It, so, it, it, I mean, I would like to proceed with that and, um, and then see where it goes. And if the answer to that question, if Mr. Gosted comes back and says the answer to that question is no, then, then we'll talk about it next. Okay. I thought we left the last meeting with the, oh, this might be an attractive option. I wasn't seeing it as a requirement of the, the committee, but I apparently well, read we, that wrong. we didn't have any of the terms either at that right. point and know right. what it was. Uh, yes. So, I, okay. Um, uh, Ms. Dockler or Ms. Whitney, anything to add to the conversation? Um, I mean, from my perspective, I, I think I would echo Mr. Crary in that I would be comfortable either way, but I'm more comfortable with the convertible note option from, you know, I, I think to Mr. Kavami's points that it puts some skin in the game. So I'm very comfortable with that one, but I also recognize that this program is of such a nature that we are supposed to be taking a little bit more risk. Um, so I, I would be comfortable either way very comfortable with the convertible note option as um, the better approach of the two. Very good, thanks. Uh, I'm apparently uh, um, expressing a minority position here, maybe one of seven. Um, but uh, so 
uh, at this point, rather than uh, a motion or a recommendation, we're simply asking for additional information from Mr. Gaustad about, uh, Gaustad about uh, convertible debt. Is that correct? I'd be comfortable making a motion to move it forward to the JDA contingent on yes. Okay. And I, would that, I would second that. I mean, is that contingent on Mr. Gosted's findings? That's too vague. Mr. Kavami, please. It, but at what terms? How do we know? Are the terms contingent on what Mr. Gosted finds out, or how do we decide that? That's, that's my only question. Mr. Gosted. Mr. Gosted. Do you have some uh, <laughs> ideas for us? Thank you. We've got some thoughts. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer the question as to what the terms look like. I'm going to be able to answer the legal question as to whether the JDA can hold an equity position in a privately owned company. That's, that's the issue that I'm going to be resolving. I'm not going to be able to then go on and say, and this is the scan, because I'm not in that line of business. I don't know what a conversion rate should be. I don't, I don't, I mean, I could come up with all kinds of exit strategies. Um, whether they're going to be acceptable to, to this group or to Mr. Gaster is, is something that's probably beyond the scope of a legal opinion. Those are negotiating uh, positions. So the, the precise question is going to be, can the JDA hold an equity position in a privately held entity? That's, that's the sole question. Yes, Mr. Kavami, please. So another path is to kick the can to the equity or the details or terms goes to JDA, but I just, I thought that we had preferred to keep that with us, but if that's not what wants to, what we want to take place, but I think that's the only way that I'd be comfortable moving forward with a motion today is if someone has to decide the terms, and if it's not us, then it's JDA. Okay, so I made a very vague motion that I think was seconded by Mr. Curry, so from a process perspective, I can withdraw my motion. Um, what, are we okay then with the scheduling another JDA meeting? I mean, if, if we're okay with scheduling a JDA meeting on July 19th, I think that gives us time to get this figured out by well, then. As staff, what I'm hearing is we have the legality issue, which right. Mr. Gosted can handle, and then we have the strategy portion of is it a 20% or Correct. different, and then what's our exit strategy? Right. And that is something that I think will require significant discussion by this group and probably some outside expertise on what does represent an industry standard. So from a staff point of view, I would like to get the programmatics figured out because we have another applicant waiting in the wings. Yes. And you know, just finding a quorum to have that first pitch meeting has been difficult. I think we need to figure out what our program is before we bring another applicant through it. So I'm certainly willing to meet as often as I can get a quorum, and I'm certainly willing to try to convene a JDA meeting to keep up with our pace. But I think the first thing is we need to give ourselves a reasonable period of time when this group can get together and discuss what we want this convertible note to look like as a template. Because I think, as you said, Mr. Holt, we don't want to negotiate every applicant on the floor every time. We want to have a pretty tight program that we offer up for applicants to know going in what they're getting into. And uh, allow me to seek a little further clarity. So let's assume that Mr. Gaustad determines that this is legal. Um, Mr. Gaster, the uh, convertibility rate is, is not something that, my understanding is it's not negotiable. You have this that you're offering to other uh, uh, investors, uh, and so that would be this is fixed for you, is that correct? It is fixed. Um, we can go back to other investors uh, if there is a need to and there's a compelling reason to, but uh, given that um, the other investors, um, let me put it this way, given that the convertible note piece of this program uh, emerged quite recently, uh, I think we would like to stick to the 80-20. It seems industry standard to us, and certainly uh, once we do set that completely in stone, that is exactly what we need to offer to all the other investors. So, you know, being practical and pragmatic, is there a little wiggle room? There probably is. 
Uh, but uh, our way of thinking, uh, we'd like to get it set in stone. Um, and uh, to answer one or two of the earlier points with regard to exit, um, this would normally, the way the note is written or drafted, is that it would basically match whatever the, the, the timescales would, would basically match whatever the loan uh, terms would normally be uh, for the program. So if the convertible load didn't exist and this was a three-year program or a five-year program, uh, as we understand it is a five-year program, uh, the load would typically match that. Uh, but you would have the option, as has been mentioned, uh, to convert at any time uh, after a, uh, a round. So after either a Series A, a Series B, a Series C, uh, whatever that round is, you have the option at that time or multiple times to convert all, some or none, uh, because that round establishes the valuation. So I just wanted to clarify that uh, in terms of how we see this working. Obviously, uh, if others have a, have a different view, uh, let's take a look. Uh, but that's kind of where we are now. Uh, obviously, we'd like to get this done and we'd like to be as helpful as possible in getting it done, but we do have to uh, be cognizant of, of other folks uh, that we're talking to in terms of investment. So uh, I just want to make sure that uh, everybody is transparent. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gaster. So um, not an absolute, but uh, if I could, Mr. Holt, um, your motion could then be um, that... Uh, uh, the Growth Fund Committee recommends acceptance uh, of, of this uh, application uh, contingent upon whether the convertible debt uh, is legal or not at the proposed rate. Uh, that might be one way forward. Uh, Mr. Kavami? Well, I appreciate and agree with everything that Mr. Gast is saying, and I think that the number should be fixed across the board. I just think that we have to, we have to be a part of that 80-20%. We can't just you know, just walk into a store and just take the price for something without checking the register or whatever. You know, it's, I feel like we got to just, we have to have a little due diligence. Absolutely. 80-20 is, is probably great and we appreciate it and I'll be fine if that checks out. Uh, we just got to check it out. So Ms. Richards, now I'm hearing an, an additional uh, a request from staff. Um, is 80-20 um, uh, the, 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 the going rate for convertibility? More yeah. research or a reasonable on that rate. subject. Or a reasonable yes. rate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything further on this item then? Because it doesn't look like I'm going to get a motion. So um, uh, I believe Mr. we've given direction to staff. Mr. Weber, Mr. I Phelan, think one please. thing the committee could um, move forward with is to amend the Accelerate Grand Forks program to include this conversion. Uh, contingent on Mr. Gostad doing further uh, due diligence legal efforts. Number two, um, defining what that conversion rate should be. At least you've moved that to the JDA in advance of anything getting approved. So it seems like there's, if there's a consensus, add the con uh, conversion into the policy. At least, um, and again, you're... If that's legal. Yeah. Right. So you're just approving the concept of amending the policy. Get that done first. Move that to the 6th of July. Makes sense. If we're ready to go legally. And we could suggest, hey, we've done some research. We've got some benchmarks. Here's what we think. And then, Mr. Gaster, you could bring back the growth fund, hopefully, maybe even by uh, within two weeks, have another JDA meet. We, we theoretically could be done by um, before August when Mr. Gaster needs uh, the funds to keep them going. That makes sense to me. Do we have a motion? I, I would along make that lines? motion. So uh, we have a motion from Mr. Kavami, second. second from Mr. Holt. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We, have, we do have a motion. Very good. <laughs> um, and then otherwise, uh, we have uh, directions from Mr. Gaustad and, and staff on these other items. Any further, anything further to discuss on item number two? The only other thing that I would add for Ms. Richards, I know we've had challenges getting a quorum I'm happy you know to keep this thing moving thanks chief if we need to look at 7 a.m. or 5 p.m. meetings and you know we can certainly do that too so well that's my hope at the end of the meeting before we adjourn we'll all look at our calendars and pick some meeting times okay one one additional note I just want to make if I can mr. chair um, <clears throat> I think as a um, as, as a committee I think we may need to be prepared to have a 
not a very solidly conclusive conversion rate. Um, I think that um, just from, from experience, and I'm not in VC, but you know, just in some experience, it's very circumstantial, uh, depending on, yeah, depending on the risk and the risk tolerant and um, the industry and the, uh, there, there's, there's so many factors that, um, you know, it, and how much money is currently available and who you're competing against. There could be multiple VCs that want in on it. And so, I mean, th th I think we may, you guys may have a challenge. Um, so I think just preparing everybody that, uh, I think due diligence, I think it's a, w a great idea. I think it's definitely needed just to make sure we're within a range. But I also want to caution on in the policy stating a specific, uh, you know, a specific uh, conversion rate. We might want to maybe have that as a range. Maybe that's a 15 to 25 percent based on how we feel the risk tolerance is. So I just want to throw that out there as well. Very good. I think that's very well said. Yes. And I think we're all going to arrange with the, always the exception of the rule because um, these are new. They're they're they, you got to have some moves on these things and you got to have some judgment. So I wouldn't limit yourself on that. I'd pick a range, but then also allow some language that you can look at exceptions to that general range rule. I think if if we could work on that and present that on at Monday's JDA, I think your motion gives us enough flexibility to get something approved at JDA. And, and sorry, one, one yes, more thing. Please, Mr. Gossett, I think I'd be more, personally speaking, I'm more concerned about the exit strategy than I'm about the actual mm -hmm. term. Um, mm -hmm. And not, not just the conversion exit, but I mean the liquidation. So we convert, we have equity, great, now what? You know, so I think if there can be, and I don't know how that looks, and maybe Mr. Gasser's team can put input mm -hmm. on that too, because I would assume if things, if you're getting a Series A, Series B, things are looking good, maybe your internal investor pool would probably be open to gobbling up those, that equity. But I would like some language in there personally um, about a liquidation of, of exiting our equity position too. Just throw it up there. Terribly important. And, and I think it's consistent with what Mr. Kivami had uh, noted earlier, the potential uh, conflict of interest that could be created. So. Um, I'm not sure where that's all going to go, but uh, for, if we could get more information on that. Um, anything further on uh, item number two? I'm sorry, item number three. Uh, Mr. Gaster, thanks for joining us again today. Thank you. Uh, pleasure talking to you all again. Okay. Uh, no doubt we will uh, continue. So thank you. Good day, sir. Uh, item, item number four, uh, assumption request AAA quality cleaners. Mr. Hanson. Chair Mr. Weber's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, just a moment. Mr. Mr. Chair, I respect to recuse my uh, request to recuse myself from discussion on this. Very good. A motion to Move. recuse. Motion from Mr. Kwame. Second. Second from Mr. Russell. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Recused approved. Recusal approved. Mr. Hanson. Uh, Chair Weber, members of the Growth Fund Committee. Uh, I'm hoping this is a much easier point to address than the previous one, and if not, there's something wrong. But uh, this is a pretty straightforward uh, assumption request. Uh, Sue Bjornstead received a C-Run loan in December of 2020. It, we approved that to provide a loan to her as a sole proprietor. She has now created an LLC. So this is simply an agreement to have the LLC assume. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Approved. Um, and so, does that is that just a recommendation then that still needs to be approved by the JDA, or, it, or do we have the ability to approve that? That's how we've always treated it: is that it recommendation here and goes to JDA. Okay, so but but that's an excellent segue into the next item, Mr. Chair. Very good. <laughs> uh, item number five: change in land leader. Uh, request from Associated Potato Growers. Um, as, as Andy's staff report summarizes, we do have a request from Associated Potato Growers for a change in lead lender. This would be the, the second change in lead lender request from them. Um, simply what it is is they're changing bankers. And we, again, typically bring these to the committee and the JD for action. But in this case, um, to kind of simplify things, we're asking you to approve this particular request and in cases like this where there are no other term changes to just allow staff to approve this administratively with the concurrence of the JDA chair who would then sign off on the loan documents. Move approval. Have a motion. Second. 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 Mr. Wolf um, and for Ms. Whitney, two seconds. Um, uh, any further comments, discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye
favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, approved. And Ms. Richards, that takes us to uh, 5B. Authorized future requests to be approved administratively. Was that, well, I, I kind of oh. took that motion as yes to both. Oh, we took a yes. That was the intention of the motion. I missed that. Very good. Uh, that, I'm seeing head nodding all around. Any, uh, Ms. Whitney or Ms. Dockler, any concern about that? Apparently. No, Mr. Chair. No concerns. Very good. I'm having trouble hearing you too, Mr. Chair. Ah, my apologies. I didn't have my microphone on, but you uh, you answered my question nonetheless. Um, which uh, brings me to my last question: Do we have a motion to adjourn? Let's oh, check let's our let's do a little please. calendar checking first. Go ahead, Miss Richards. Well, um, we do have another applicant that was safety spec, which. I'm sorry that I bombarded you all with emails a few weeks ago trying to get their pitch meeting scheduled. Um, I think it behooves us all to have another meeting to iron out the program parameters as we just discussed. So, um, when works for you guys. <laughs> we, we did talk at, at the last meeting of reserving third and fourth Mondays at four o'clock just so, you know, you'd kind of have some time blocked out on your calendars. But I think we are going to need to look outside of that time frame to get some things done here in short order to get both first eyes and safety specs applications dealt with in a timely manner. So, Mr. Holt, you said, what about 7 a.m.? We could do noon meetings. I'm just looking for a time where we could have a first meeting with Mr. Gostad present to talk about what this exit strategy needs to look like and how we put together this convertible debt. And then once we've got that ironed out, then we need to have a meeting for a pitch from safety spec to kind of start the process that, that John Gaster and First Eye are now concluding. Just All of that within the context of our next growth fund committee regular meeting will be the last Monday in July because there's an audit committee on the third Monday and we can't meet on our regular date. So just to keep things as confused as possible. Could, could we do July 12th, Monday, July 12th? Four o'clock meeting on July 12th. And, and I could do 7 a.m., 12, 4? Uh, four o'clock on the 12th works for me. Me too. Do we have a quorum that day? I'll be out of town, but I can Zoom for sure. I'll be available. Yeah, I'll be out of I town. I can make myself available. I could uh, call in. Would that be for the uh, eyesight discussion? No, that would be for this I, kind of programmatic discussion. Yes, yeah, for that. I mean, I don't envision that being a lengthy meeting, but I could call in at 4 o'clock that day. That's... Mr. Gostad, if you think that gives you enough time to address the legality. Uh, I've already uh, sent an email asking for okay. assistance on the issue, so it will. All right, so we will say 4 p.m. Monday. Maybe, maybe if I could jump in. I thought, here's a, I thought we were going to the JDA to get the program updated, amended, we'll say. And then we'd bring First Eye back on July 12th. Um, uh, well, maybe you need to do both. Maybe we have a, you're going to ask the JDA to approve in concept the conversion, okay? Right. I think on, just to keep things moving, I think you should have a growth fund. By then, you should have all the particulars on July 12th, and then also try to finalize first eye at that same meeting. Uh, assuming Otherwise, that you're, gonna, gonna, you're gonna move past the JDA meeting with first yeah. eye on the next Monday. You're gonna, you're gonna push them into August. So, so it's assuming that we can come to an agreement yeah. on whatever the details are. So the more information we have prior to that 12th, yeah. the better we can be prepared to make a decision. I, I'm, I can't promise that I'm going to feel supportive of that, but my intent is to be supportive of that. I think the goal should be, in Mr. even though we're, we're making, Mr. G he's joining virtually, so I think if it doesn't happen on the, uh, on the 12th or the 19th, at least it keeps it moving forward and we're, we're con continuing to refine to get to a conclusion on that. So I think I always put it, put him on the, so if we're ready to go and Mr. Gosthead and has done all the due diligence, you guys feel good about it, let's just roll it right into that application and maybe we can get that approved and get it to the JDA as the final authority. 
that works for me. Okay. Ms. Richards, this is uh, Ms. Whitney. You have a quorum on the 12th, correct? Well, let's verify that. Because I, I am not available on the 12th. I am in the air and do not land in Grand Forks until 5 p.m. So, Mr. Curry, you can jo join via Zoom. Mr. Kavami, you're good. Mr. Weber is good. Jonathan's good. Mr. Wolf, via Zoom. There's our quorum, Katie. I'll be by Zoom. We have a quorum. Okay. And Thank you'll you send all. out a calendar invite for yes, that I as well. Will. Very good. All right. Any, anything further to schedule today? I don't want to push my luck. We've, we've got something good for the 12th. We'll make it count. Very good. Um, then, if there's nothing, Mr. Kamami? Move to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second for Mr. Holt. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>